What is going on my YouTube family? Sergeant Greybeard at Greybeard Gaming Group. Today is Friday, August 21st, and as always, I hope this message finds you healthy and safe. If this happens to be the first time you are visiting our channel, first of all, welcome. Secondly, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We would love for you to be a part of what we're doing here, and if you enjoy this, please drop a like as well. It really does help us out. And finally, as you can see in the screen, we are happy to announce our next big giveaway. It is for an Xbox One S or a PlayStation 4 Pro. All you need to do to enter is subscribe to our channel here, or you can follow us on Twitter. Either way is fine, and we will be announcing the winner on November 5th of this year. Keep in mind, my friends, watching our content or subscribing to our channel is not a requirement for winning. That's why we give you the option of following us on Twitter. Here at our channel, we only want you watching stuff that you enjoy. Having said that, let's just get into today's video on the best way to farm for exotics so far in The Division 2. So as we begin our video, please keep in mind that this video is designed for beginners, people who are just returning to the game, or people who are new to the game entirely. One of the most commonly asked questions that we get at our channel is what is the best way to farm for exotics? So today we're going to give you a bunch of tips and we're actually going to show you some examples on how we had success. So the first thing I do when I log into the game is I activate the targeted loot on the map so I can see what's going on for the day. One of the options you have when farming for exotics are running a mission over and over. So for instance, if I was looking for the Bullet King, which is a light machine gun, I'd be farming the Pentagon today. Now later in the video, I will show you, as I said, different options. But another example is if I was looking for the Sweet Dream Shotgun, I'd be farming Space Administration HQ. So when you check the map, look for the icon of the item that you may be looking for. Another recommendation I have is farm missions that have multiple named bosses throughout it. A great example is Lincoln Memorial. I check this mission first every day to see if there's anything I may be looking for because there are four named bosses. Again, great place to farm. And on that note, another option you have for farming for exotics are finding named bosses in the open world. We actually put out a video that shows some of the locations of the named bosses in both DC and New York. I'll leave a link below, but please remember with the named bosses, they spawn every 30 minutes. So if you battle one and lose or you beat the boss, again, you have to wait 30 minutes for the next. The third option you have for farming for exotics is farming control points. And this to me is my favorite way to farm because that way you're not locked behind the same level over and over again. Now you can see in the map that our world difficulty is set to heroic. Now that is not a requirement, however, when the control points are set to heroic, you face two named bosses, which again are the best way for items to drop. Keep in mind, heroic difficulty is not a requirement. We're going to show you every difficulty in this video, but in regards to the area on the map right now, as you can see, it's the rifle. If I was looking for any exotic rifle, I'd be hitting up this spot today. The next example we're going to show you in a few moments are farming bounties, and I think it's the best way we found exotics so far in the game, without a doubt. A great area to farm, for example, on this map would be the area where masks are. So if I'm looking for the vile or the coyote mask, I'm definitely hitting this up. Reason being is when I scroll over to bounties on my map, you'll see in a moment that today there happen to be four bounties in that area. So again, if I'm looking for the vile mask, if I'm looking for the coyotes mask, this would be a spot you would definitely want to farm. And keep in mind that any named enemy can drop any exotic, but if you're looking for something specific, hitting that targeted loot area really can help you. And one of the last options we'll be showing you of the day is farming for exotics in the dark zone. I'm not a big fan of the dark zone, but again, for instance, today is an example. If you wanted ninja bike knee pads or Sawyer's knee pads, this is what you'd hit up. So next we want to show you how to farm using those different options. And we're going to start off with examples on the best way to farm missions. Now at our channel, we have put out a bunch of videos on how to farm specific items. And when you're doing missions, there's one tip that we always want to give you. In our opinion, the best thing to do if you're farming a mission over and over is to change the difficulty between attempts. So you saw a moment ago that on that mission, we farmed it on challenging. 
In this case, we were farming Wall Street to try to get the Bullet King because it was the targeted loot that day. And as you can see on our next attempt, all we did is we dropped it down to normal. And you'll see in a second that the Bullet King dropped. And the reason we're showing you this is we get a lot of questions, you know, what's the best way to farm? Which difficulty? So here's the thing. Technically, on Heroic, you have the best percentage of the item dropping, but that doesn't mean that's not going to drop in other ways. So again, when farming missions over and over, if that's something you'd like to do, go from, you know, heroic to challenging or challenging to hard, then, you know, hard to normal or whatever order you do. I don't think it matters. It just matters that you do switch it up. That does seem to help. Here is another example of the same method that was used. Right now, the mission is on challenging. The attempt we did before this was on heroic and then we were able to get the pestilence to drop. Now, I think we were actually looking for the Bullet King at this point. So anytime you're running a mission where, you know, there are multiple exotics that can drop, this can happen. But again, getting a Pestilence, not a bad thing. The next option we talked about that we want to show you now is going after named enemies in the open world. Now, this is one of our favorite spots. It's in New York. And the first thing you do when you get to the spot is you make sure that the named enemy is there. Two quick tips. First off, if you get to a location where you know there should be a named enemy and they are not there, just reset your control points. Secondly, once you defeat any named enemy on the map, there's a timer that resets for 30 minutes until you can go after any other one. I also recommend in this farming method to change the difficulty of the world here and there. So if you are trying, you know, one time you're in an open world, you're doing heroic, change to challenging, just keep mixing it up. Here is an example, again, open world named boss or named enemy, whatever you want to call it. I was on challenging difficulty. We were actually en route to a bounty, ran into a named enemy, and was able to get Lady Death. The next thing we want to show you an example of is farming control points. Now, if you can farm on heroic, I recommend that because that way you face two named enemies throughout the actual control point itself. If you happen to have a hard time clearing a control point on your own in Heroic, I recommend going to the control point, calling for backup, waiting till someone shows up, and then going after it. Now we have had exotics drop using a different difficulty on control points, but our experience has been the best running Heroic just because you do face those two named enemies before you finish it. Next, we want to talk about farming bounties for exotics, and this mathematically is where we've gotten the most exotics to drop since we've been playing the game. Now, when you're farming this way, it's a little bit tougher to try to get a specific item unless it happens to be the targeted loot in that area. But again, any named boss can drop any exotic, so you always have a chance of getting something you're looking for. In this case, the assault rifle was the targeted loot in the area, so we got the chameleon. And I think this example is, I think marksman rifle was the targeted loot, and we got the nemesis. My recommendation is do random matchmaking for bounties, and then check your map, and if there are any you haven't hit up as yet, start the bounty yourself and call for backup. That way you can make sure that there aren't you miss out on, plus you can dictate how difficult the bounty is, because in bounties, obviously, the harder the difficulty, the better items that will drop. And as we finish this up, lastly, my friends, the other option you have for getting exotics is going into the dark zone. Now, I have mentioned in previous videos before, I am not the biggest fan of the Dark Zone, especially now there's a lot of cheating, there's a lot of glitches, stuff like that. But as you can see there, you know, named enemy, got Sawyer's knee pads right here. It's just a random, you know, uh, NPC wound up getting the Bullet King. Now, obviously, the tricky part about getting anything in the Dark Zone is you got to get out with it. So again, enter at your own risk, but you always have the options of, um, you know, farming in that area. So just a quick recap as we end this video in regards to missions, change the difficulty when you're trying to farm for named bosses, know the areas you're going to, and always make sure they're there. When farming control points, hit heroic up if you can. If you're struggling at all, call for backup, wait till they arrive, and then start the uh, control point. When hitting up bounties, make sure that you are checking your own map to make sure there aren't any that you missed. And finally, as I talked about with the Dark Zone, if you're braver than I am, you're going in there. Just make sure you get out with the stuff.
And as we end this video, I want to once again thank you all for the continued support. We are a newer channel, but the way the community has welcomed us here has just been absolutely fantastic. As I said at the beginning of the video, if you're new, hit that subscribe button. We would love for you to be a part of our family. If you enjoyed this, hit that like button. But most importantly, as always, take care, be kind, and we will talk to you soon. Thanks again, everyone.